Getting familiar with the keyboard and learning to find your way around easily is a really important part of learning the piano. So after you've learned how to name the white keys, the next thing you want to do is learn how to name the black keys. If you need to brush up on naming the white keys first, then I've got another video linked in the description which you should check out and then come back here. There's a little more to this one because there's actually two different names we could use for each of the black keys. Once you know the trick though, that's not as complicated as it might sound. And in this video, we're only going to focus on which names you could use and not when to use which one because it doesn't really matter at this stage. If we look at the keyboard, let's just take this little window from C to C for now. All of these notes, when we go in order, it kind of looks from the buttons, remember the, these are the buttons to play the notes, it kind of looks like they make this shape that my finger's making up and down like that. But if you look at this part of the piano, it's important to think of these notes as being in a straight line. If you've ever seen the inside of a real piano, you can literally see all the notes in a straight line. So when we go from one note, let's take this one. If we go from there to right next door, this way, that is called a semitone. So that was moving a semitone up and going from here to here would be moving a semitone down. So this is moving up in semitones, playing every note. And this is moving down in semitones, playing every note. Some semitones are going to be white to black. Some will be black to white. And there's a couple where there's two whites as well. But they're all right next door to each other. So I said there's two ways that we can name the black notes. For each of those ways, we still use the same seven letters, A to G, as we did for the white notes. But then we add a word afterwards. The first word is flat. The symbol for flat looks like this. And when we're naming the notes, flat means go down by one semitone. And remember, down is this way on the piano. So if I take this note G and go down by one semitone or flatten it, I get this note. So we can call this note G flat because it's one semitone below G. So you can see why it's best to know the white names first for this. Let's do the rest of them. So we've got D, so this one's D flat. That's E, so this one could be called E flat. G, G flat like we just did. A and A flat. B and B flat. You might be wondering what happens if you do that with a C or an F. So if you take C and flatten it, there's some cases where you'd call that C flat, and if you take F, there's some cases where you'd call that E F flat, but that can get confusing, and at this stage, you're not gonna need that. So it's good to know that that exists, but don't worry about trying to learn that fluently this early on. The next word is sharp, and the symbol looks like this. This word means the exact opposite of flat. So flat meant one semitone down, and sharp means one semitone up. So if I take this note, it's above C, so we can call it C sharp. This one's D sharp because it's above D. F sharp, it's above F. G sharp and A sharp. And again, we can make F an E sharp and we can make C a B sharp but you're not going to need that at the moment, so don't bother practicing that yet. Just learn the normal black key names. So that's how naming the black keys works. Remember at this stage though, to focus on being able to use either flat or sharp separately and not when to use which one. It's really important to work towards getting these down as confidently as you can, because as I mentioned at the beginning, you'll need to find notes for everything else. And if you're struggling with flats and sharps, it can really make learning other things you need or a song or anything like that a lot harder and slower than it needs to be. So you can use exactly the same methods to practice this as you did with the white notes. And if you're not sure what they were, I'm gonna recap those in a second. And you can practice on your own with a friend or head over to my practice play along, which is in the description.
With the black keys though, it's best to do it twice at first, once with sharps and once with flats, and then you can mix them up once you're confident at it. And then you can mix it with the white notes as well. A lot of your practice will also happen when you're playing and learning other things, because you'll always need to find the notes. But remember, it's really good to isolate different skills to really make them stronger. So the first practice method, just like the white notes, is to go up and down, naming the notes out loud. It's important to name them out loud so you establish a strong connection between the name of the note and what the note looks like and really look at the note as you're saying it. So we have to do this two ways, one for flat and one for sharp. So I recommend starting on, uh, let's do flats first, starting on D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, and then coming back down. Go as slow as you need to start with and then you can start getting quicker and then you can start going over a bigger range so you could go from here and then go up to there and then down there and what you could also do is you could try starting at different places to push it a little bit more and again like the white notes focus on going down a little bit more because I think that's going to be a little bit harder than going up. So repeat that with flat and then with sharp. So the second method is to practice naming a random note. So if you're on your own, find a random note by looking away and pushing one, and then turn back around and try and name it as quick as you can, and keep doing that. Again, do it with flats and then with sharps. If you've got someone to help you, this might be easier because they can pick notes for you and then they can check them. And you can check them with the worksheet that's downloadable in the description, or you can use my practice play along video. Again, start as slow as you need and then try and get faster and faster as you get more confident. So the third method is just like the second method in reverse. Make sure to do it both ways because in reality you will be doing it both ways and it's good to get used to it. So pick a random note name out of your head, flats and sharps, do them separately first and then mix them up um, and then try and find that note. If you've got a friend, again, it's going to be easier because they can check it for you and give you note names to test you. Uh, but my play along practice video has that covered too. Don't over practice this. Just give it some attention until it starts to feel confident when you're first beginning. And then again, down the road, if it feels a bit off. If you do that, it should just start to feel like part of your vocab soon enough, which is what we're aiming for. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you have any other practice methods that might help each other out because different people always like to do stuff slightly differently. If you want something as a reminder of how all this works that you can have to hand at the piano, then I've got a link to a worksheet on my website, which is down in the description. And soon I'm gonna have a key points video, which will be a super quick recap of all the note names which you can use. To get yourself naming the black keys faster, click on my play along practice video. Thanks for watching, hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and see you in the next one.